Cancer affecting one or both lungs is lung cancer. It results in malfunctioning or obstruction in the normal functioning of the lungs. Dr. Yona Stumpf is a senior consultant radiation oncologist and advisor on oncology and cyber knife services at Apollo Specialty Cancer Hospital. Smoking is identified and promoted as one of the main causes of lung cancer. Thus, a chronic smoker diagnosed with lung cancer quits smoking. Um, I don't think there is much benefit of quitting smoking after the diagnosis of lung cancer has been established. It is unlikely that it will bring any kind of benefit for the treatment itself. But it is reasonable to quit smoking in general. So the point is that um, smoking will bring a lot of carbon monoxide into the blood, into the hemoglobin of the red blood cells. Though it is not an established research result, but it makes sense when we know that oxygen is needed, for example, to the efficacy of the radiation. Badly oxygenized tissues do not respond very well for the radiation. So it makes sense to quit smoking, smoking, especially if the patient is being given radiotherapy, in order to get rid of the carbon monoxide in the, in the blood and probably give a better chance for the radiation treatment. And once, if you were able to quit smoking for six weeks of treatment, probably you should quit forever. But it is not making a big, big change in the, in the future and the hope for the cure. What are the other causes besides smoking that leads to lung cancer? I don't think that there is anything else which is having an established role in the lung cancer. Smoking is a mucosal irritation, a chemical irritation and a chronic chemical irritation. Similarly, in the air, if there are chronic chemical irritational factors, they are likely to promote the risk of cancer of the lung. But I won't be able to give you any real data, research-wise, academically sound data, that the air of Chennai or New York or London is more or less risky for the, for the lung. It makes sense. The air quality is important. How is lung cancer diagnosed? How is it treated? The majority of the lung cancer will be diagnosed by different types of X-ray or image investigations. Today we are usually talking about CT, but sometimes even a simple chest X-ray will reveal the diagnosis. That is the suspicion, especially if the pictures, the images are characteristic and the intelligence suspicion. The diagnosis is always established by biopsy and histopathology tests. That is the cornerstone of cancer diagnosis at all, in general, in every case, it's not only cancer of the lung. After the diagnosis has been established, there is next thing what we call staging. It is a quantitative diagnosis. The previously was a qualitative. What is the pathology we are facing? The second is the quantitative. How big, how extended, how spread is the disease? And once if we know all these things, then the patient will be advised either for a systemic treatment with chemotherapy or for a local treatment with surgery or radiation. And today we are having an uh, alternative to surgery. This is the high dose radiation called radiosurgery or fractionated radiosurgery for a cancer of the lung as an alternative treatment for the surgery, especially older patients or those who are having some medical underlying major medical problem. They are risky patients for surgery. 
they can benefit of the up-to-date radiosurgical procedures for the lung cancer. The first impression is that for an early stage lung cancer, the efficacy of the radiation, that kind of spatial radiation, is at the on par with the surgical excision. But I have to say it is the first impression based on the research what we are having at the present stage. Can you tell us the symptoms of lung cancer? How is a person's regular activity affected by it? The usual symptom is cough, but by the time the patient starts coughing or even bringing, bringing up blood in the sputum, this is usually already a late stage of lung cancer. Unfortunately, the vast majority of the can lung cancers are diagnosed in that late stage. This is the problem with the lung cancer. There is no efficient and simple screening available for lung cancer. But those who are having the smoke exposure, smokers, and those who are chronic smokers and a large number of, of uh, cigarettes or whatever they are smoking, they can develop a kind of individualized spatial cancer screening program, usually with CTs, so that a small lung lesion can be detected and attended. What measures can a passive smoker take to prevent lung cancer? Uh, beat up the person who is smoking just beside you. That is the simplest, but uh, it is happening in the society. Let me be very clear about Today, the society is getting increasingly intolerant for the smokers, especially in a confined enclosure. And I strongly feel that's a very, very good progress in the social control. And let me be very clear about any smoker can withhold himself or can postpone the next cigarette for hours. In intercontinental flights, six, eight, ten hours, there is no smoke. And there are chronic smokers among the passengers, and they can survive as well. If they can survive an intercontinental flight, then they can survive an evening with social gathering as well. At what stage is lung cancer curable? Um, usually at an early stage when the cancer is locally or we call loco regionally confined. That means there is a starting point for this kind of solid cancer. Somewhere in the lung there is a, 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 a spot or a nodule which is cancerous. Then the cancer can migrate to the lymph nodes. So if the cancer is only in the local area and the lymph nodes nearby, underlined twice, then it is likely to be curable. Explain the purpose of CyberKnife. The CyberKnife is a high precision radiotherapy equipment with I was talking about the lung cancer and, uh, and about the curability and the treatment options for the early stage lung cancer and the cyber knife, the model is standing in front of you, is a way how we can treat very efficiently a lung cancer detected at an early stage. It is a procedure what we call radiosurgery, especially to the fractionated radiosurgery when we apply a much more efficient, much higher dose of radiation to that particular small spot or volume in the lung. And this can control the cancer just like the surgery can. I believe that we have to talk about something which is absolutely human, normal, because it is about the benevolent approach of the environment, social environment towards the patient diagnosed with the cancer. Whenever a patient is diagnosed with cancer, everybody has a good advice. As a matter of fact, in India, two things everybody knows well or knows better. One is cricket, the other is the medicine. So the patient will be advised on very, very different ways. And the patient also go to the internet. 
to get to fetch information, how can I be cured, what can be done with me. It is absolutely normal, it is part and parcel of the present day's life and this is something which is appreciable. One thing, however, has to be understood. The internet is a fantastic source for information, but a completely unfiltered one. And there can be gold and there can be rubbish. So whatever people have taken out of the internet and think this is something which is absolutely relevant to my condition, that's fine, the feeling is okay, but it has to be discussed with the oncologist. And ultimately, the patient is advised to take the advice and the guidance of the specialist.